JWST has been looking at Saturn's largest moon, Titan. It's the second largest moon in the solar system, behind Jupiter's Ganymede, and is actually larger than the planet Mercury. Let's take a look at exactly what the team saw when they got the data on the 5th of November 2022, and follow that by touring some of the other images that JWST has recently taken. Titan is the only moon in the solar system to have a dense atmosphere, and the only body in the solar system other than Earth to currently have liquid seas, lakes, and rivers. They're not made of water though on Titan, but rather hydrocarbons like methane and ethane. Its atmosphere is also thick and hazy, so the visible light that something like Hubble would see is often obscured by the haze. For the infrared light that JWST sees though, this is much less of a problem, and we can even see the surface in one of these images. We actually got two images from JWST of Titan, both shown here. They were both taken in near-infrared light by the instrument NERCAM on board JWST, but used different filters to let in slightly different wavelengths of near-infrared light in each of the pictures. The left picture uses a longer wavelength filter and lets us see the lower atmosphere of the moon. This comes with a reddish glow, but we can also see two major clouds in the image too, and also the effect of haze towards the South Pole. This is so cool. We're seeing clouds on a moon that's about a billion miles from us. On the right hand side though, we have a composite image made of light of a few different wavelengths, but all shorter than the one used on the left. Here, we can see those clouds once again in the Northern Hemisphere, but we can also see a few interesting surface features as well. These include the epically named Kraken Mare, thought to be a huge sea of methane. Belet is a ripple of dark colored sand dunes and Adiri is a particularly bright and reflective area that seems to be a region of high ground riddled with drainage channels. These drainage channels are naturally occurring, of course. Don't get your hopes up that some titanic aliens, titaniums we could call them, built some drainage system. We don't seem to know much about Adiri, but the Huygens probe did land near it in 2005 and took this pretty cool image. All of this is pretty awesome. We now know for sure that Titan forms clouds in its northern hemisphere, due to warming in its late summertime as the surface of the planet heats up. Once the team realized they had seen clouds, they had a great and ambitious idea. That idea was to find another telescope and point it at Titan as soon as possible and see if we can image the clouds again to see how they're moving and changing. Hawaii's Keck Observatory was perfect and after negotiating with the team scheduled to use the observatory that night, they pointed the 10 meter mirrors of Keck at Titan II. Despite the pretty quick response, the Keck observations were still two days after the original JWST images were taken on the 4th of November. So the teams weren't even sure if the clouds would actually still be there. Many solar system bodies like Jupiter and Saturn have clouds and atmospheric structures that last for years or even decades and centuries. We're looking at you, Great Red Spot. But Titan is more similar to Earth than the gas giants, and clouds don't tend to last that long on these rocky bodies. Despite this concern, everything was a huge success, and here we can see the Keck image on the right and the JWST image on the left. And this shows us the evolution of the clouds over 36 hours or so. That is, assuming they are the same clouds and the original ones didn't disappear and give way to new clouds. That in itself would be an interesting thing to have seen, but we can't be 100% sure which scenario is right. Either way, we see the clouds have moved slightly. Cloud A over here comes more into view, while cloud B starts to hide from us, and we can see the shapes change ever so slightly. I think this is pretty awesome. The days of atmospheric physics observations on moons in the solar system have officially begun, and we're now at a point where we can study airflows in Titan's atmosphere. Now, admittedly, you might be thinking that the Keck image is a bit crisper than the JWST one. So what was the point of sending JWST up if we could already take these images? If you already wrote a comment on that, leave another one right now to say that I predicted you. There are a few ways to answer the question though. The first is wavelength range. Keck sees mostly visible light with a little near infrared light, while JWST goes all the way down to mid infrared wavelengths. Keck is also on the earth, meaning that it can be larger. 
picture. And the mirrors on the two Keck telescopes are 10 meters each. So it will naturally have better resolution than JWST's 6.5 meter mirror. Keck, however, also has to deal with the atmosphere of the Earth, which JWST doesn't. So that tends to make things harder for Keck to observe small objects. Although it does use something called adaptive optics to help. This involves shooting a huge laser into the night sky. And I have a video all about it because I think it's pretty cool. JWST is way better at imaging smaller and more distant objects and seeing through dusty and hazy regions too. For example, we didn't get a shot like this of the lower atmosphere from Keck. They're very different machines designed for different things. It just so happens that they can both look at Titan. And here, the size of Keck is helping get a slightly clearer image. The big thing is time too. Neither of these telescopes has time in their schedules to watch Titan for a day and a half. So combining the observations when each one can be used gives us this cool story of the evolution of the clouds. Is that enough though? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. The team have actually also taken spectra of Titan using the near infrared spectrograph NERSPEC, which is on board JWST. Analysis is ongoing and we haven't seen anything publicly yet, but when we do, it will give us access to many wavelengths that ground-based telescopes like Keck just can't see. Along with future observations planned from NERCAM and the mid-infrared instrument MIRI in May or June 2023. This will teach us even more about the composition of the atmosphere and the surface in never before seen detail that even exceeds the quality of data that we got from the Cassini spacecraft that actually went to Saturn and may well give us the next chapter of the story of whether some form of life is possible on this giant moon. Slightly further afield than our solar system, JWST has also been watching two galaxies merge together. The pair is collectively known as 2ZW96, and this merger is taking place about 500 million light years from Earth. The galaxies have grown into a chaotic, warped shape as they merge. They probably started as two beautiful spiral galaxies, like Andromeda or our own Milky Way. But the gravitational interaction between the two has caused much of that structure to be lost to the chaos. Entropy always wins. We can see the bright cores of the two galaxies falling towards each other, now connected by bright, tendril-like filaments, highways made of new stars. You see, these tendrils are forming many new stars as the gases of the two galaxies smash together and collapse in this new stellar nursery. The merger itself will take millions of years to complete, but for now we have this cool snapshot of the process. It was especially tempting for JWST to image a merger like this because newly formed stars like those in the tendrils are especially bright in the infrared wavelengths of light that the telescope can see. To give you a number to put on that brightness, the galaxies are about 100 billion times brighter than our sun. As ever, beyond just the merger, which is the real focus of this image, we also have a menagerie of background galaxies in the image too, some of which are really well defined and have a lot of visible structure. We also have a few bright foreground stars from our own galaxy too. Those are the especially bright looking white spots with the big diffraction spikes, which are caused because these stars look so bright to the telescope. And that's just because they're so much closer than the merging galaxies. The galaxies are way brighter, they're also just way further away. The Hubble Space Telescope has also previously imaged this merger. And here we can see a transition that goes back and forth between that Hubble image, which has a bluer color to it in general, and the redder JWST image we've just seen. You can see the detail, while already good in the Hubble one, increases dramatically in the JWST image. And we can see a lot more structure, both in the main merger and in those background galaxies we just mentioned. Next up, we got another brand new look at one of the most beautiful and famous objects that JWST has looked at so far, the Pillars of Creation. Just like the merger we just saw, this new look at the nebula is a composite image made by combining data from the near-infrared detector NERCAM and the mid-infrared detector MIRI. We've seen the images from those two instruments separately, and I actually have a video about those which contains all of the interesting details about this object and images. But this new view combines those two images to show us all of those details in one glorious picture. It's somehow stunning and spooky all at the same time. Check out the previous videos on the channel for more on this one, but in short, this is a huge cloud of dust and gas, once again forming loads of stars, and I think it's a real highlight of JWST so far. 
Finally, I want to show you this awesome landscape from JWST, which we haven't covered before on the channel. This image from the Glass JWST Early Release Science Program shows an incredible field of galaxies. And this one really is worth downloading yourself to have a look at all of the incredible details in the image and zooming in and around it to try and spot the coolest things in there. The reason this image is quite exciting, besides being absolutely stunning, I mean, just look at all the details we can see here, is that it's deep enough to show us some of the most distant galaxies ever seen. Two in particular are boxed and shown nice and big for us. And these are the most distant ones in the image. Number one formed just 450 million years after the Big Bang. And number two formed at an even earlier 350 million years after the Big Bang. Given that the universe is now about 13.8 billion years old, this is an incredibly long time ago and can teach us about how galaxies actually do form and what they look like when they were so early in their formation. I hope you've enjoyed seeing these awesome images from JWST. Subscribe if you're new and leave a comment below to let me know which one of these you're most excited about or what you hope JWST points its huge mirror at soon. Until next time, stay safe team. I'll see you soon. Bye.